Welcome to Casual Nerd Reactions, my name is Chris, and today I'm watching The Day the Earth Stood Still, the 1951 version, for the very first time. I don't know a ton about this movie, I know it involves aliens of some kind, I believe that maybe they have a message for us Earthlings, and I look forward to seeing what it, this movie entails. I've never seen a sci-fi film from this time period, so I'm excited to get into it uh, today with you guys. So hey, give this video a like, subscribe uh, if you are enjoying the content, it really does help the channel. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this movie, and if you'd like to support me even further, or you wanna watch the full-length reaction to this movie or any movie on my channel, including some upcoming films, uh, you can do that on Patreon, and I'm excited to watch this, so let's experience the day of the Earth still for the very first time this is oh my gosh this is so vintage the music ah, i love it every alien movie even in the 1950s gotta have some kind of like radar call headquarters get the lieutenant holy christmas that thing's doing about four thousand. he just said holy christmas the government has not yet issued any statement but there seems to be no question that there actually is a large unidentified object traveling at supersonic speed is headed over the north supersonic Atlantic speed. the east coast of the United States. This is H.V. Carlton Barnes. I love like using the news and the radio. It gives it like an air of authenticity. Like, oh my gosh, this is happening. We should be freaking out right now. Oh wow, everyone's pointing up. I thought just a light in the sky is honestly super effective. Honestly, yeah, I wouldn't be running. I would just be standing and gawking. Oh, cool. Oh my god. Yeah, I would still be standing and gawking. Like, even if it means I die, I want to see what's in there. Behind the police lines, there's a huge crowd of curiosity seekers. The army has taken every precaution. Yes, I would be in the crowd. Just a minute, ladies and gentlemen, oh. I think something is happening. Yes, I love that it's happening live on the news. Breaking story. Everyone leans in. <laughs> Honestly, it's like the simple things that are sometimes the most compelling. Oh, wow, this is weird. I love the way the ship is opening. This is not what I expected. I thought they would just like walk out from underneath it, but no. Love that it's kind of a... Uh, humanoid in an alien way. We have come to visit you in peace and with goodwill. <laughs> peace and goodwill. Get your guns ready, boys. Oh, weird. Oh, it's like some kind of message. Oh, it's spiky. Oh, you just. I mean, I know what he held was suspicious, but you shouldn't have shot him. Oh, you shot the thing. Even scarier. <laughs> now everyone runs. Oh, cool. It's like vaporized the guns. Wait, it's making the tank disappear too? Really cool. Nothing but dust. Gift for your president. With this, he could have studied life on the other planets. Get that ambulance over here. Take him to Walter Reed Hospital right away. I feel like that de-escalated quickly. Oh, let's take him to the hospital. Okay. My name is Harley, secretary to the president. Mr. Klaatu. Klaatu. The president asked me to convey his deepest apologies for what has happened. Okay, we're getting along in this movie. This is good. You're very curious to know where it is you've come from. From another planet, sir. I want to meet with representatives from all the nations of the Earth. I'm afraid that would be a little awkward. It's completely without precedent. Without precedent? Uh, aliens just landed on your planet, bro. What's the precedent for that? Our world, at the moment, is full of tensions and, uh, and suspicions. Still true today. My mission here is not to solve your petty squabbles. <laughs> Love this. It concerns the <laughs> existence of every last creature on Earth. I don't want to resort to threats, Mr. Harley. I merely tell you that the future of your planet is at stake. I urge that you transmit that message to the nations of the Earth. You just do it, dude. I will make that recommendation to the President. I'm extremely dubious about the results. Apparently, I'm not as cynical about Earth's people as you are. Okay, I love the optimism of the alien. 
Klaatu. I also feel like um, the president, what was he doing that's more important than visiting the alien like right away? Like, cancel all my plans. I'm going to go myself. <laughs> I saw the ramp come through the side of the ship right here. Now I can't even find a crack. Hmm. Has he moved, Sergeant? No, sir, not an inch. This is the toughest material I ever saw, General. For hardness and strength, it's out of this world. Hmm. I removed a bullet from that man's arm yesterday. Well, what about it? I just examined the wound, and it's completely healed. All right. He put some salve on it, some stuff he had with him. Take it downstairs and have it analyzed. Then I don't know whether to just get drunk or give up the practice of medicine. No, examine that and leap human healing technology forward by hundreds of years. Seems like an opportunity. The president accepted your suggestion and cabled the invitations for a meeting. The right thing to do. Let Good me job. read you some of the replies. Perhaps you'd like to discuss it with the president. I will not speak with any one nation or group of nations. I don't intend to add my contribution to your childish jealousies and suspicions. Before making any decisions, I think I should get out among your people. And become familiar with the basis for these strange, unreasoning attitudes. I was going to say, he's probably like low-key in captivity. I must ask that you don't attempt to leave the hospital. Our yeah. military people have insisted on No, that. he's going to get out. Oh no, a lock! <laughs> oh, I bet he's not even there. I bet he just got out somehow. Mysterious. <laughs> the way they ran in. I love it. Undo shock. Uh, he is an alien. He landed in a spacecraft with technology you don't understand. You really thought a locked door in a room would <laughs> keep him captive? He's not eight feet tall as reported. Nor does he have tentacles. There is no denying <laughs> he is a monster at large. It's a refuse to on just which planet until they've had an opportunity. To... That though this man may be our bitter enemy, he could be also a newfound friend. Yes. Not sure. Show the man's face. It's the man! Great use of shadow and light. My name is Carpenter. I'm looking for a room. Oh, I see. <laughs> Are you an FBI man? No, I'm afraid not. Can I help you look for the spaceman? I know just what he looks like. <laughs> oh. He's got a big square head with three great big eyes. That's enough, Bobby. <laughs> what? The imagination of this kid. I love it. What other terrors can he unleash at will? Reading the morning paper. Terrifying. He must be tracked down like a wild animal. He must be destroyed. I love the media. Why doesn't the government do something? That's what I'd like to know. What can they do? They're only people, just like us. We automatically assume he's a menace. Maybe he isn't at all. Then what's he hiding for? Maybe he's afraid. He's afraid. <laughs> well, after all, he was shot the minute he landed here. <laughs> it's true. I don't think he's afraid. He just wants to get to know people. Or perhaps before deciding on a course of action, you'd want to know more about the people. There it is. Oh, Mrs. Benson, Mr. Stevens is here to see you. No, oh, thank you. Excuse me. We're all set. I picked up some sandwiches and put gas in the car, and the radio's still on the blink, so we can forget about the spaceman for today. Well, there's only one thing. I haven't anyone to stay with Bobby. I'd be happy to spend the day with him, if you'd let me. Say, that would be great, wouldn't it? I mean, there's no better way to get to know um, a city than through the eyes of a child. Certainly a less cynical uh, take on the city, and perhaps a more honest one. Aww. Mm. That's my father. He was killed at Anzio. Don't they have places like this? Well, they have cemeteries, but not like this one. You see, they don't have any wars. Gee, that's a good idea. <laughs> I've got two dollars. Mom gave it to me. No, I want to take you to the movie. Do you think they'd accept these? Uh, no. Bet they're worth a million dollars. Would you give me your two dollars for two of these? Well, <laughs> sure. That is a very good exchange rate. Kid we got it's a not deal. Not mom about this though, huh? Good call. Why not, Bobby? Well, she doesn't like me to steal from people. It's pretty much theft, yeah. <laughs> Those are great words. That's the kind of man I'd like to talk to. Bobby, who's the greatest man in America today? That's a darn good question. The greatest thinker. Well, you mean the smartest man in the whole world? Yes, that would do nicely. Professor Barnhart, I guess. He lives right here in Washington, doesn't he? Right near where my mom works. I love that they can just walk up and ring this man's doorbell. <laughs> Maybe he isn't home. 
It's possible he's at work. Crazy idea. I uh, don't know any of this stuff. What's that stuff on the blackboard mean? It's a problem in celestial mechanics. Hmm. I bet he's the only one in the world that knows the answer. He doesn't know the answer. <laughs> He'll never get it that way. Oh, don't just... We probably couldn't get to see him even if he was home. I don't know. I bet he could get in. But you shouldn't just go hey, where in. where are you going? <laughs> if he's that difficult to see, perhaps we ought to leave a calling card. You gonna solve the equation for him? Oh. Who dat? How dare you write on that blackboard? Mm. Do you realize the professor's been working on that problem for weeks? He'll solve it in no time now. I think he'll want to talk to me. <laughs> Mr. Carpenter, come home yet? Yeah, he's right inside. Oh, I suppose Professor Barnhart's been looking for me. I've been looking for you all afternoon. The boss is leaving for Chicago tomorrow. If I could tell him that I was getting married and had two dependents. You're a good salesman, but I've got to think about it. This is the man you wanted to see, Professor. Yes, he looks like a professor. This is great. You wrote this? It was a clumsy way to introduce myself. How can you be so sure? Have you tested this theory? I find it works well enough to get me from one planet to another. Ooh, he's coming clean. You may go now, Captain. Please thank General Cutler and tell him, tell him that I know this gentleman. There are several thousand questions several. I'd like to ask you. I'm sure there are. I don't often ask a lot of questions, but I would have questions for Klaatu. Your planet has discovered a rudimentary kind of atomic energy. Yes, that is true. Soon, one of your nations will apply atomic energy to spaceships. That will create a threat to the peace and security of other planets. I came here to warn you that by threatening danger, your planet faces danger. Okay. I'm prepared, however, to offer a solution. Would you care to be more specific? What I have to say must be said to all concerned. Must I take drastic action in order to get a hearing? What, what sort of action do you mean? Violent action. Leveling New York City, perhaps? Or sinking the Rock of Gibraltar? That would get people's attention, but it might not make them receptive to your message. Especially since I believe you have a message of peace. Would you be willing to meet with the group of scientists I'm calling together? Yes. Perhaps you when could politics fell, to them, and science. I in turn could present it to their various peoples. That's why I came to see you. Suppose this group should reject your proposals. Mm. What is the alternative? In such a case, the planet Earth would have to be eliminated. That's unfortunate. You mentioned a demonstration of force. Yes. Would such a demonstration be possible before the meeting? Yes, of course. I wouldn't want you to harm anybody or destroy anything. Why don't you leave it to me? <laughs> Something dramatic, oh, but man. not destructive. <laughs> That's a kind of a lot to ask. Honestly, why would people not rush to see what this man has to say? This is none of my business. But why did that man come here last night? Bobby and I tried to see Professor Barnhart in the afternoon. He wasn't in. I think her response was appropriate, like, oh, I'm skeptical about this. Hmm. Are you ready? Well, I will be in a minute. The picture starts at 8.50. I was just talking to Mr. Carpenter. Is he going to be jealous? I'm sorry. I guess I'm just tired of hearing about Mr. Carpenter. Um, I don't like the way he's attached himself to you and Bobby. After all, what do you know about him? It's been, like, two days. I'll go get my things. Oh, guy, way to, like, bravado your way out of a marriage. <laughs> all you have to remember is first find the common denominator... And then divide. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Carpenter. Mr. Carpenter. I... Good night. What did you want to say? Don't fall in love with an alien, Miss Benson. I think it would be better if we didn't see quite so much of Mr. Carpenter. Okay, Gee, I what, misinterpreted huh? that, He's my I guess. best friend. Aw. Best friend! Did you really go see Professor Barnard? Sure That's we did. That's great. And Mr. Carpenter showed him how to do his arithmetic. <laughs> Is she putting it together? Bobby, give you a flashlight? Yeah. What do you need it for? I, uh, um, the light in my room went out. Oh. So he lied. The light worked just fine. All right. Is the, I assume the kid's going to follow him. Yes. I mean, I would like the kid to stay inside and be safe, but that's far less interesting. Oh, 
Oh, is he like communicating with the robot via like Morse code, kind of? But probably different and more advanced. That's really cool, actually. It's nice that they cut away. Like, we know what happened. We didn't have to see it. I think the kid should go on the spaceship right now. Go, 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 go. Imre Klaatu Narawat. Macro Pluvao Barata Lukdenso Empiklet. Yavu Tari Axel Bugletio Berengi Degas. After you left, I followed Mr. Carpenter. And where do you think he went? Right into the spaceship. Bobby, you've been dreaming again. No, I haven't, Mom. Honest, I, I promise you, I saw him. I'm kind of scared. Oh, don't be frightened, Aww. darling. It was only a bad dream. How come no one ever believes children? Sometimes they're telling the truth. You haven't even been out of the house. Yes, I have. Now, you didn't <sighs> really see a spaceship, but you thought you did. This is how you kids end up in therapy. <laughs> like, don't tell the kid what happened. Let him talk. Oh, diamond. So why are his hands so dirty? He's not there, but look what I found in his room. Is it real? Well, it looks real to me. Well, Mr. Carpenter's got lots of diamonds. I think the guy's a crook. I never did trust him. Gee, Mom, you think maybe he's a diamond <laughs> smuggler? This kid always has some wild theories. <laughs> Bobby, your shoes are soaking. Yeah, the grass was kind of wet. Because he left the house. Look, physical evidence that backs up his story. Mr. Carpenter. <laughs> Hello. May I see you for a minute? Bobby has such an active imagination. Did you believe what he told you? I have a reason for asking this. A very important reason. Tell him the truth. Say, I didn't at first, but I'm starting to. Perhaps I should be completely honest with you. Uh-oh. What happened? We shall be here for a little while. Oh. About 30 minutes. You see, the... Electricity has been neutralized all over the world. Oh, what a clever idea. This would be even more insane if it happened today. Like, even half an hour without electricity. And we're like, I mean, think about the implication. Oh, even the crank tractor doesn't work? Oh, no. A brilliant idea. I never would have thought of it. What about the people who are coming to the meeting tonight? Have they all arrived? Yes, here's the list. Power's been cut off <laughs> everywhere, with a few exceptions. And even these exceptions are remarkable. Hospitals, planes in flight, that sort of thing. That's awesome. Will you please tell me where it came from? That's what I want you to tell me. But there are no diamonds like this any place in the world that I know of. Are you sure of that? That makes it more valuable than diamonds. I thought if you knew the facts, you'd appreciate the importance of my not being apprehended before the meeting tonight. If this meeting should fail, then... I'm afraid there is no hope. Dun dun dun. Must be 12.30. A lot of damage could have happened in half an hour. I would kind of like to see a whole movie just based on that half hour. Tom, he was there last night when Bobby told me what he saw. Do you think he'd tell anyone? Well, I think he'd talk to me first anyway before. What about the robot, Colonel? I was directed by the Joint Chiefs to find a means of immobilizing him. We accomplished that this morning by encasing him in a block of KL-93. Up till now, we've agreed upon the desirability of capturing this man alive. We can no longer afford to be so particular. Oh, the escalation. I have some terrific news about your friend, Mr. Carpenter. What about him? Helen, he's the man from the spaceship. I know, it's true. You... How do you know? Never mind about that. But you've got to promise me you won't say a word to anybody. Are you crazy after what happened today? He's a menace to the whole world. It's our duty to turn but him in. But he isn't a menace. He told me why he came here. He took. He told you? Oh, his jealousy is gonna rule his. General Cutler. Yes. Oh, all right, I'll hold on. Tom, you mustn't. You don't know what you're doing. It isn't just you and Mr. Carpenter. The rest of the world is involved. I don't care about the rest of the world. That's part of the problem. You'll feel different when you see my picture in the papers. I feel different right now. You wait and see. You're gonna marry a big hero. Nope. I'm not going to marry anybody. There's a certain brilliance, um, about having an alien show up on Earth and the movie is structured in such a way that we're on the side of the alien rooting for him. Yay. Where's the meeting going to be? At the ship. Interesting choice to do it at the ship. 
Attention zone five, attention zone five. Yellow cab moving north on 14th Street from Harvard Street. Hot on the trail. Oh man. Okay, I'm really confident they're gonna make it to the meeting, but this movie has me like, what if they don't make it? I'm worried about Gort. I'm afraid of what he might do. If anything should happen to me, he could destroy the Earth. Uh-oh. If anything should happen to me, you must Gort. go to Gort. It's a name. You must say these words. Klaatu, Barada, Nikto. Oh man, I if I had to remember and repeat those words, the Earth might be doomed. Klaatu, Barada, Nikto. Attention all units, Northwest Area, Zone 5. Close in. Hey, what's going on here? Drive. They're getting out before the cab's even stopped. <laughs> why are you shooting them? I mean, I know why you're shooting them, but don't shoot them. Get that message to God. Oh no. Katu, I forgot. Baradu Nikto. I, they're not just gonna let her leave. Well, apparently they are. Okay, does does the robot know the whole message? Like, can he do what Klaatu came to do? Yeah, I don't know why you thought that would hold him. Oh, that's right, just the guns, okay. Oh no, whoa. It wasn't just the guns. This kind of escalated. That's, that's worrisome. Say the words, girl, fast, swiftly. Say them now. Take your time. Now hurry. If you die, it's your fault. <laughs> you have a message that's important for all of mankind and you scream and collapse. Oh, no, no, no. Say the words before you die. Ratu. Barada. Barada. Nikto. Nikto. What are you doing now, mister? Oh, you're picking her up like King Kong, sir. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> yes, we have the body here now, locked in a cell. There's no question did, about it, General. He's dead, all right. They... Two thumbs down. <laughs> Well, I suppose it's possible on the spaceship there's, um, I mean, he had that ointment or whatever it was that healed him swiftly. So maybe there's something that can keep him from being permadead. I don't know why I said permadead instead of just permanently dead. Uh, we got a, got a bed of healing. I'm very sorry, but I have to ask you to call off this meeting. Call nope. it off. But I had permission from the army. I know you did, sir, but the robot's on the loose now, and it's not safe around here. <laughs> I thought you were... I was. <laughs> he has the power of life and death? No. That power is reserved to the Almighty Spirit. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. I like how they still, like, incorporated God into the story. <laughs> Most alien stories would just discount uh, God or just not reference it or talk about it. Interesting. Under the circumstances, the army people have asked us to leave. I can do nothing but suggest that we comply. Oh, or start the meeting. All right, I've been waiting the whole movie. What do you got to say, my friend? The universe grows smaller every day. And the threat of aggression by any group, anywhere, can no longer be tolerated. There must be security for all, or no one is secure. Now, mm -hmm. this does not mean giving up any freedom, except the freedom to act irresponsibly. For our policemen, 
we created a race of robots. Hmm. In matters of aggression, we have given them absolute power over us. At the first sign of violence, they act automatically against the aggressor. The result is it's we intense. live in peace, without arms or armies, secure in the knowledge that we are free from aggression and war. Hmm. It is no concern of ours how you run your own planet. But if you threaten Fair. to extend your violence, this earth of yours will be reduced to a burned out cinder. Join us and live in peace or pursue your present course and face obliteration. It's kind of a uni unique way to say like, hey, don't attack us or we will obliterate you. <laughs> we shall be waiting for your answer. The answer is we won't attack you because we don't want to be obliterated. Are we going to see their answer? Probably not. I feel like this is like, eh. We said what we came to say. Let's bounce out of here. Zoom. Wow. Honestly. What was that? <laughs> that was really interesting. I don't know, man. I, I enjoyed watching that. I really love the simplicity of it. Yeah, I'm not going to get into, like, the big picture politics of, like, on Earth, if uh, we should be made to live peaceably by threat of a um, giant death-defying robot. Come to your own conclusions on that. Uh, from an intergalactic standpoint, yeah, obviously, let's not attack the other planets. Let's approach it with peace in mind. And uh, from an earthly standpoint, I, I think, yeah, like, wouldn't the world be a better place if we um, sought to get along with each other, to live at peace with each other? Um, I, I know there are times when going to war is the right thing so uh, i don't know uh, you know politically what this message this movie is trying to communicate but from like an interpersonal relationship standpoint i'm just um the last couple years i've personally been overwhelmed and tired of just seeing people angry with each other and divided and fighting and arguing over so many things and look we are gonna have different opinions we're gonna have different viewpoints on things in this world because I mean, things are complicated. Things are not simple. However, I just, come on, humans, my fellow humanity, can we please disagree with each other and still love each other? Can we disagree with each other and not hurt each other and be leading with anger uh, over our disagreements? I just, there has to be a way, there has to be a path. I don't think a giant robot forcing us uh, to get along is the right path, but I just, you know, we need to take personal responsibility on how we treat each other. That's all. <laughs> Hit the like button on your way out. Subscribe uh, for more content like this. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.